Welcome to Boss Marketing Clubhouse. I'm Becky Yetta with B Seller Productions, and today I have Susie Nelson Crowley with Coastal Properties Group International. She's a real estate agent in the area that is doing a phenomenal job with her social media and her marketing, and I wanted to talk to her. She's also a friend of mine. Hi, Susie. Hi, Becky. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for coming to our studio. Well, thank you for asking me to be here today. Well, we've been talking a little bit about marketing, and I don't really know your marketing journey. I came in to oh. meet you when you were well on the way of, you'd been through many different iterations, and you knew what you were about, uh, but I don't know how you got there. Oh, well, I started out in real estate uh, 19 and a half years ago, and it has been quite the journey and quite the evolution in that period of time. We uh, started out when real estate marketing was all about door knocking and cold calling and sending, sending postcards to people you didn't know. And it's morphed significantly since then. What are you doing these days for marketing? Oh, well, um, you know, it's interesting as a, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you know that, you know, one day you're doing sales, one day you're doing marketing, one day you're doing finance. Um, but we've had to learn a lot about social media marketing of late. Um, so not only um, are we on Facebook, but we're on Instagram. I have a, a nascent YouTube channel even that I've uh, been working on the last six months. So you're doing YouTube content as well? I'm doing YouTube content as well, yes. What do you do with your YouTube channel? Do you go and uh, look at houses? or? Well, a, a bunch of different things. I think that... Well, first off, it's, you know, we're pretty intentional about what it is we're doing. Um, there's a wonderful gal by the name of Karen Carr, who's kind of the uh, Yoda, perhaps, of YouTube for real estate agents. And so I've been following her program. I've learned about things like keywords and TubeBuddy and keywords everywhere, so that when I sit down to do content, it's not always just, I, hey, I think I'll do this, but it's also... It looks like there is a need for this. Mm -hmm. So I plan my YouTube content out uh, intentionally that way. Uh, I have uh, one YouTube video that's called The Best Neighborhoods in Tampa. And um, during that video, I say that, you know, it doesn't matter what I think the best neighborhoods in Tampa are. The best neighborhood in Tampa is the best neighborhood that's right for you. So are you looking for urban living? Are you looking to be suburban? Do you need to be on the water? Are you looking for value? It, you tell me what it is that you're looking for, and I'll help you find the right neighborhood for you. And I'm excited to say that that video has over 2,000 views. Wow. <laughs> that is viral, really, for, you know. Oh, mini viral. <laughs> I would say it's viral because of who your market is and who, mm -hmm. you're, who you're trying to reach. I mean, if, if you spoke to a group of 2,000 people, you would think that was incredible. Well, it's, it's been kind of fun to watch it grow and, and snowball a little bit. And in doing the analytics for that video, I found out that, yes, there is need for other neighborhood videos. So I have uh, had spinoffs from that speaking about um, Davis Island. I've done a video about Palmasia. I've done Carrollwood, Harbor Island. And uh, is there life north of Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> so it's been fun. It's been a fun journey. I love that. Um, I just saw, uh, totally off topic, I just saw a, um, a bumper sticker that said SOG on it. South of Gandhi. And uh -huh. I was all like, why would you advertise that? But whatever. Uh, it's coming up. Well, there isn't much land left in South Tampa, and so South of Gandhi is where it's at. That's you know? true. Mm -hmm. Our first film was uh, filmed South of Gandhi on West Shore mm -hmm. in this old warehouse called Westinghouse. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they've torn it down and built those beautiful the condominiums beautiful condom. now, which I haven't seen, but, you know. Well, how has social media impacted your marketing efforts? Well, I think that one of the things about social media is making sure that my target market for my business and the social media where I'm present are in alignment because I'll be working along and all of a sudden somebody will mention TikTok and I'll go, oh my God, do I have to be on TikTok now? And then I think, oh no, my target market's not on TikTok, so I don't have to be. So I've never TikToked and I'm only a twice tweeter, but I am active on Facebook and Instagram and of course YouTube like we just spoke. 
Oh, wonderful. And how is it working for you? You know, in some ways, I would say that staying top of mind with the people that I know uh, has been important. Um, I think it gives people that are looking for a realtor a chance to get to know me because I publish a lot of my personal life on there, like going back to the Stras for the, the other night for the first time, albeit in, in uh, masks, was pretty exciting to be out and about. Yeah. So, so I do a lot of uh, out and about. Um, on Inst- Instagram, we're doing Friday faves. And today we posted about my business partner, Sunny's fi- Friday fave, which is a Jet City uh, coffee shop. Oh. So we're, we're trying to show our knowledge of Tampa and what we think makes Tampa great. Because when you get right down to it, you can find houses on any number of uh, real estate websites. The realtor that you choose, you need to choose because he or she knows the area and what makes the area tick. And that's what we're trying to show in our, in our social media. And I think you do a really good job of that. Oh, thank you. So how has your uh, business been benefited by referrals. You, you said that you had a referral system or something? Oh, yes. So early in my career, when I was, was learning about door knocking and cold calling, and I said, oh, no, 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 I am never going to do that. I learned about Brian Buffini, and he has a program teaching realtors how to build their business by referral. And that felt so much more um, human to me than just calling people on the phone and saying, do you want to sell your home? That made no sense to me. Also, I don't dig rejection. So being hung up on was not high on my list of things I wanted to do. So I learned about Brian Buffini, and he really taught you know, how to build your business by referral, how to um, provide value to the people that you know in terms of real estate, how to teach them how to refer to you, and uh, really kind of almost how to... Um, Oh, I hate to say reward them for doing so. I mean, I, I actually really buy into the reward thing because we, mm-hmm. we do it all the time. We do it in, in all of our relationships. Mm-hmm. We okay. reward people for, um, you know, for good behavior. So, um, you know, when someone is polite, oh, they true. get treated a little bit better mm-hmm. than when someone isn't. You know, so, if, you know, so we do it constantly. We just, it's, it's what society does to each other mm-hmm. to keep us in line. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with okay. reward. Um, well, so, so let's say that, you know, the, the Brian Buffini program taught us how to show people how to refer to us and to think about us when they had friends or family. Because uh, let's be honest, when you're new in real estate, your friends and family, they know you're new in real estate. And they may not be digging on, you know, giving you their business, but on the other hand, they might be willing to refer you to somebody else that they know. So then you open up your pool of, of possible, you know, future clients to not just the people you know, but all of the people that they know. So Brian Buffini's program was very, you know, like I said, human. We wrote a lot and, and continue to write a lot of personal notes to people thank them, thanking them for their business. Um, we have client parties. We take, you know, kind of just pop in on clients with just a little treat. I mean, they're, and they're small treats. That's why I call them treats, not gifts, you yeah. know. Um, you know, a couple of lotto tickets on um, St. Patrick's Day. May the like of the Irish be with you. So just little things that, that can delight our clients. So that was really, I think, the key to my uh, building my clientele was by working you know, purely on a referral basis. You were telling me about some people you were having dinner with last night? Oh, yeah. I was out to dinner last night with clients who've become friends. Um, let's see, how many years have I known them for? I, I've probably known them for 15 years. And during that time, we've done eight transactions. So when you work by referral, your focus really is on making this just a stellar experience for your clients so that they remember you and are happy to refer you. So you spend your marketing budget on things like, you know, maybe taking clients to dinner rather than the next big billboard that a bunch of people who have never seen you before, you know, may see on the, you know, on the side of the road. So it it makes for you know, I think, again, a much more personal relationship with your clients and, you know, just a wonderful, a wonderful way for me to build my business. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, that's a different way of thinking about marketing. 
and it's very important. Mm -hmm. I've often wondered how many other industries really employ that. You know, if I were in a high-end industry, um, let's say jewelry or something, you know, I would, I wonder, do the people that are in the stores know that uh, so-and-so might want a Patek Philippe watch? And oh my goodness, we just got one in and call them and let them know and, and build their business. Or people in cars, do they do the same kind of thing? You know, do you want a sneak preview of the newest Maserati? It would be interesting to learn that. I, I'm not, I would think not. Um, I think that it, because it takes so much time and energy to keep, you know, I am assuming that you're keeping this information in some sort of CRM. Oh, absolutely. So that yeah. you can, you know, keep track of it. Um, and I, maybe car salesmen are doing that because they're building relationships, but... I, I used to sell furniture at one time, mm -hmm. and you know, at a I would consider a higher end place, um, you know, where you know someone would typically buy, spend eight thousand or more, mm -hmm. because if they're buying a whole room, it's going to cost them, you know, ten thousand dollars probably. So, mm -hmm. um, but we were encouraged to create relationships, but weren't given the tools to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the case in most places. I think real estate is different because it is a very personal thing that happens yeah. and it's high end. It's, mm -hmm. it, you, there's a lot of profit involved. Um, so that that's where the, you know, the, the real uh, motivation comes from. But I remember being on my first movie. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, it wasn't the first movie, but I, I got to work with um, a wonderful producer. Her name is Gail Ann Hurd. Mm -hmm. And she spent the time like, writing thank you notes and she put she put together wrap gifts for the whole crew mm -hmm. um and she went to talk to the um the genre press at the time um because they were important you know if you're doing something in a particular genre you need to make sure that the people who care about that particular thing are mm -hmm. invested in what you're doing and at least agree or believe that what you're doing is appropriate you know for instance, it was The Punisher, which is the oh, yeah. the film they filmed uh -huh. here in Tampa. Well, it's a, mm -hmm. you know, the guy, the classic guy is big, he's Italian, he's dark haired, uh -huh. and he's definitely tall. <laughs> they got mm -hmm. a short, blonde haired guy whose latest film was called The Sweetest Thing, uh -huh. which I just watched recently on Netflix. I love Cameron Diaz, but no. It was not for me. But anyway, it was a very floaty, frivolous kind of film, funny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's blonde. He's not very tall. Why did they pick him to be the Punisher? Right? So they had to convince mm -hmm. the genre press that it was okay that this blonde guy uh -huh. was playing this classic yeah. character that they uh -huh. were looking forward to seeing. So you took, you know, it's still marketing because you're taking care of that customer. And that customer ultimately is going to buy your product you know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. thank you notes is how you communicate to all of the people that are associated with your, um, your business because yeah. you do want them to re be referred back. Mm -hmm. Well, we, you know, we treat re real estate not in a transactional manner, but in a relational manner. Yes. So we send, you know, we send out uh, house anniversary cards on somebody's house anniversary purchase or house oh. purchase anniversary, I guess. <laughs> and, you know, all kinds of little crazy things that we do along the way. Well, that is really encouraging to me, to, uh, you know, because um, I really have trouble with that. And it feels false sometimes, like I'm doing mm -hmm. it specifically for business. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've just encouraged me again that it is important. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, we do care about our customers. We really mm -hmm. do. But using those um, methods to get in with them to keep again keep them top of mind and that way you you can ask them for referrals right is that how you well um i have been known to say at the end of a conversation and this is pretty much a direct quote although i haven't done it in a long time is that in closing i need to tell you that the shameless marketing department insists that i mention that if you know of anybody who's thinking about buying and selling to please think of me <laughs> you know? at, the end of was, at the end of a conversation and that is you know, it was my way of making a joke of it, but still bringing it up. Yes, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Because it's, it's serious business, but you don't want to be serious mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> no, I have, I mean, I can get all buttoned up and businessy when I need to, but I'll write, you know, when you get right down to it, I want to have fun. <laughs> so I did do some, 
YouTube videos, um, which is me talking to the camera just to get it out. You know, um, I, I eventually like, I watched this woman named Amy Landino, mm -hmm. who's a YouTuber from like way back in the, she's like over 10 years of YouTubing. Way back, right? 10 well, years but ago. it, it yeah. was the beginning of uh, YouTube. Sure. Like it was a big deal for her to do it. And she was really, really young when she started. She looked like a teenager, like a 15 year old. She looks like wow. a child in her first oh. videos. Uh -huh. And she just kept, you know, but she kept doing it, but she, uh, just encouraged me to do it. You know, it's as a woman, I think it's difficult to, you know, a young woman, I think to come out in front of people and talk to people at her age. I was like really, you know, impressed that, and yeah. that she would keep doing it, you know, not yeah. stop. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, cause it's really hard. I find it really difficult to watch myself on video. It is, but you know, somebody once told me and they're so right. Your friends know what you look like. <laughs> they know what you look like, they know what you sound like, and they think you're beautiful and they like you. So same person. But I think one of the one of the best things about being on video is that people can get to know you. And you know, and, and it's so much more again genuine or human. Yes. So that if uh, I've got one one of my favorite videos where I'm portraying the buyer side of something and the seller side of something. And I was talking to my husband, who's the clever one in the family, and I said, Dan, I'm going to go get a hat that's got a B on it, and I can wear that when I'm, you know, wearing the or representing the buyer, and then one that's got an S on it's when I'm representing the seller. And he says, and you can call it Susie's BS. <laughs> So I have an episode on my YouTube called Susie's BS. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And I'm probably going to do it. So I think that, you know, the nice thing about YouTube is that people can get to know you. They and, can. You know, and if that's not their cup of tea, then fine, because this is, you know, who I am. That's right. And, you know. And, and in your business, that's really who you, you know, they're buying you really, right? Yeah. That's another thing I have said to clients is that, you know, you owe it to yourself to choose the realtor that you're the most comfortable with because a good realtor is going to be with you through thick and thin. And if I'm not it, then find somebody else because that's what you, you know, that's who you need. You know, there, there's such disruption in the real estate industry right now with uh, yeah, just, you know, a Rubik's cube of things happening. And um, I, I, I hold on to the belief that a good realtor is going to earn her, you know, is going to earn her commission, not just because of pretty houses. That's the easy part. I'm never taking tums, you know, while I'm showing homes. I'm taking homes, tums once the home goes under contract and we're getting through the inspections and the appraisals and any title issues. And oh my God, there's a hurricane coming. And now all of a sudden we can't get the insurance and, you know, this kind of stuff. So that it's that compressed 30 day period where we really, where we earn our money. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'm sorry, I digressed. No, oh, I love it. Keep going. There, Keep going. Know. But I, you know, I think that that's where our good realtor earns, earns her money. And, and it's in doing that, that we want to shock absorb for our clients so that we can, um, you know, uh, keep them from, from feeling the pain that, that we're going through and, and make that, you know, the bottom line is, is that we want their transaction to be a positive thing, a happy thing to, um, you know, this again goes back to not marketing to the millions and the, on the, um, billboard, but focusing your efforts and, you know, a lot of your marketing budget on making sure that this part is calm and managed and that we celebrate the, um, our successes. I buy champagne by the case. I give it out easily. Here, you're under contract, have a bottle of champagne. Here, <laughs> you're closing, have a bottle of champagne, you know. <laughs> Here, your appraisal came in low, have a bottle of champagne. <laughs> because I think it's these kinds of things that, again, make a, make a difference and make it personal. Yeah, and reward the um, client for working with you. you know, yeah. I mean, you are making it better for them, but you are rewarding them mm -hmm. for working with you. And, you know, somebody also once said that... Um, you know, a taxi and a limousine will get you to the same place, but it's the limousine becomes part of the experience and is spoken about. So that's what, that's what we're trying to do with our marketing, showing who we are and with our personal, you know, personal 
intervention management, you know, during the whole process. So your customer journey is really important to you. Customer journey is very important. Yes. Yeah. Very so they're, important. they're getting to know you by watching your marketing efforts through social mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't do um, traditional advertising. Do you, you know, I really don't. I mean, we'll, we'll have some, um, some boosted posts on Facebook, some um, boosted stuff on Instagram, but we're not really, and when I say we, I'm talking about my very small, very personal team. Um, we don't really do a lot of hardcore advertising. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's mostly um, brand awareness, you know, type of thing. And then, you know, get to know us. Uh, we do try to do a lot of education too, because there's, you know, uh, we do this all the time, you know, but the average home buyer is going to buy once every six, seven, eight years, you know, and things, a lot's change. So we do a lot of um, education um, along the way. So a value add, you know, not just look at me in front of a house, but, you know, here, let's talk about appraisals. Let's talk about inspections. Let's talk about the buyer and seller side of the, of the inspections. I love that value added. Well, we try. <laughs> what are you the most proud of in your business in the last two years? Two years because <sighs> we had that awful year that we're just coming out of and maybe a little bit before that. Jeez, what am I most... You know, I suppose I'm most happy that, that I have built a business that continues to grow and sustain me during all of this. And, and that's, again, I didn't really miss a step during COVID. Um, so I guess that's, it's, that's really what's, you know, what I'm most proud of is, is being able to keep things going, um, keep my clients, you know, happy and, um, to be able to continue to find them homes and help them realize their, their real estate dreams. That sounds, sounds kind of sappy, but you know, to help them get where they want to want to go and to be part of that, even in amidst some of this craziness. You know, I mean, we did a lot of adapting last year, but real estate or uh, real estate agents, realtors are problem solvers. I mean, it's what we do. Yeah. So, you know, we figure it out and we wear our masks and we carry our hand sanitizer. And here we have our COVID, you know, 19 um, disclosure. And, you know, <laughs> of course, there's always a new disclosure, you know, but, you know, we just morphed through it and we're able to keep, keep people going and you know, keep, keep people moving as they needed to, you know. What, uh, what have you, what experience have you had with video? Cause we were talking about video a little bit when the cameras broke there. What, what, uh, what have you been doing new with video? Oh, new with video has been, um, it's been a kind of half and half neighborhood videos and informational videos on my YouTube, um, on my YouTube channel. So, um, we've done, um, I've done in conjunction with my business partner, Sunny, a market update. Um, I'm working on right now. Oh, this is fun. I'm doing business, um, business focus videos. Um, I find a business that I like that I want to promote and I'll go in and I'll interview and do my own editing. <laughs> they say that the, the videos should, should seem, um, authentic. Well, mine are very authentic. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say the real polished, but I'm, I'm working on one, on uh, an interview with uh, Andrew Tambuso with the boozy pig. Oh. If, if you've not been there, you need to go to the boozy pig. Um, it's, it's on Henderson, right? Uh, no, it's actually on um, Cyprus. Okay. It's on Cyprus, just east of the Midtown area. So he let me in behind the scenes and I learned about his business and shot some video and I'm in the midst of editing that. So that's the kind of thing that just really gets me jazzed up is being able to shine some light on, again, the parts of Tampa that I think make Tampa so unique. You know, I, I, um, I tell people nobody ever bought a 433 with a pool. They buy a home that's close to schools. They buy a short commute because they want time, um, time to spend however they want to do it. They buy a, a beach place for their, the Zen nature of the ocean, or uh, 
they buy a place that where it's walkable and kinky and interesting. So it's being able to show these parts of Tampa in these videos that I'm having a lot of fun with. Awesome. I did a video about Urban Bungalow, which moved to Hillsboro, uh -huh. and the new Pickford's counter there. Uh, oh, that yeah, was yeah. that was the first one that I did. And uh, the Boozy Pig, I've got like five or six more in my mind that I want to queue up. So I love doing that and again, showcasing, you know, the texture that Tampa has. That's awesome. You're making a little Tampa channel. A little, a little Tampa little channel. mini Tampa channel. <laughs> oh, you know, I love, I love that because I love uh -huh. celebrating the place that we live in. And it is an interesting city. There's a lot of really mm -hmm. unique places and, you know, interesting things to talk about. Lots of cool little neighborhoods. That's for love, sure. Like mm -hmm. tiny little neighborhoods. So it's mm -hmm. nice that you're, you're spending the time to do that. And what I admire about you is that you're willing to learn something new. Um, you know, video editing and shooting video is a, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're doing it and you're learning it. Well, I'm uh, certainly not ready to quit my day job. <laughs> yes, well, don't quit your day job. You won't make any money. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but, well, I have en enjoyed and admired your journey as well. You know, just oh, digging in and making it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this because I love it. Mm -hmm. I love video. And I love the power of video. I love how it's able to impact people and totally, completely change their minds about things. Like, um, just today, we've heard the concept of what you've seen on, on the movies isn't true. The reason you even have to say that is because people believe what they see in the movies. And yeah. it gets into your brain and it becomes part of who you are. And we we discount that. We think mm -hmm. that's not important, but it, it's, it's everything. And, and to me, um, marketing is really planting things in people's minds. Nothing does that better than video because it's as close to human life as mm -hmm. we can get. You have sound, you have moving things. So you can see like a person, you can see their spirit. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just what they look like. It's their spirit. It's what they, who That's they are. Point. Yeah. It's how they interact. It's how they talk, what they have to say, how they move their body, what their eyes are doing. Mm -hmm. Tell us things. We humans look at people's faces and we're fascinated with their faces because that's where the information is. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out what's going on behind their eyes. And you that's can't so get that any other way except video. You know, we're having an experience right now that I think video is impacting so positively. And that is that we're getting a puppy Aww. and I'm going to Cleveland on July 31st to pick him up. Uh -huh. And so we're all about puppy training. And I can remember reading books about puppy training before and trying to figure it out. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. You can go to YouTube. You can find the author of this book. You can go to their YouTube channel. You can see the training, you know, in person whenever you want to at three o'clock in the morning if you can't sleep. And it has been so, I mean, what, what it offers us is just amazing to me, you know. And I'm hoping that I can do the same thing with somebody who's sitting in Cleveland who's thinking about moving to Tampa and says, oh, where am I going to go? And they may find my little YouTube station and see, you know, be able to follow neighborhoods and learn about Tampa. It's, it's an amazing vehicle, video is. That's wonderful. I love that. I, I think Tampa is such a difficult place to explain to people like it's, who aren't from here. Like... Somebody told me the other day, I was, it was a real estate conference I was mm -hmm. at. And um, this woman was, found out that I lived here and she said, it's like a permanent vacation. And I was like, lady, I'm work for number one, I'm literally working right now. Uh -huh. So no, it's not a permanent <laughs> vacation. I work, I live and work here. Um, and I just, that just blows my mind. Cause like, we don't think of it that way because we live here. It's not vacation. We live here. It's, we want it to be a place about work and about school and raising families or whatever it is that the mm -hmm. person's doing. It's our life. This is where, where we live and we live here permanently. So we're here in the middle of the summer. We're not flying off to live someplace else for four months and then coming back. Mm -hmm. um, and those people don't have a different perspective too. But anyway, um, I think it's a really okay. difficult concept to explain to people. Like, what is special about Tampa? 
um, but and the, show it in video. You know what I'm saying? But the, you know, what I've settled on is the texture of Tampa. It has a boatload of texture. You know, everything from, you know, our downtown area and, you know, the commerce that goes on there to the Pinellas beaches where, you know, to, to Ebor, to Carrollwood, to South Tampa, to, you know, an hour from, um, an hour from Disney World to, you know, it's, you know, there's a bunch of texture True. here that's mm -hmm. been, you know, that is so much fun to educate people about, mm -hmm. you know. I took a, a walking tour of Ebor last weekend and learned about, you know, the melting pot that, that is Ebor and how that, you know, evolved. And it was fascinating. Was know? it a historic walking tour or mm -hmm. the ghost tour? No, historic walking tour. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I like the yeah. ghost tour too because yeah. they put a lot of history into it. Didn't we do the ghost tour together many years ago? No, we went on a uh, we went on a walking tour. Oh, this is where we right. met. That's right. Uh -huh. I actually have video of the moment that we met because I was taking video of a of a building or something, uh -huh. and you started talking to me, and uh -huh. so I have your our first interaction on oh, video. Oh, wow, that's wild! Just the audio. Uh -huh. It wasn't. We didn't show you or anything, uh -huh. but. Um, it was like downtown uh -huh. um, cemeteries. I yes, believe. that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh -huh. the, the, I think it was the downtown partnership uh -huh. put it on. But yeah, I love exploring Tampa and learning more about it because it really is a lot to learn. I think uh, another thing about Tampa is there are places to go to see the sun setting over water, and that is just really special. Yeah, yeah. You know, to live in yeah. a city that's not a beach city and still have that is amazing. But it was so lovely having you on. Thank you so oh, much for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a, been a real pleasure, Becky. <laughs>